everybody my name is Megan and welcome back to my channel if you're new here I highly suggest you go back to my first video about setting up my summer school classroom so you can kind of know where I started at um, by the way I also have a cold so I apologize if this video sounds weird or anything um, my nose is really plugged and this morning, I just couldn't be bothered to put on a lot of makeup or anything, so it's just one of those days, guys. Like, I got a cold last Thursday, and I had it all weekend, and today I just felt like a zombie, so bear with me as I kind of explain things and all that, and I hope you guys enjoy my video. Okay, so today is Monday, and like I was explaining, it was a really rough weekend with this cold, so I was really, really happy that I prepared all my stuff this morning. I almost didn't come to school because yesterday we were flying home from California, and I threw up on the plane like three or four times, and I we like didn't even get home until like 10.30. I'm sorry, my nose is so frustrating. And yeah, so it was just really kind of one of those times where I was just like, I really want to sub, but I don't want to take the time to write lesson plans. Plus, I need the money. I don't have another summer job. So I really, really, really need the money and I couldn't afford to miss today. So I just had to force myself to get out of bed and to do what I needed to do today. And I'm actually really proud of myself because it actually turned out to be a pretty good day. So let me tell you guys what we kind of did and then show you some of the stuff. So first, we just had like a fun morning. I was telling the kids like, you know, I don't feel well. And I like to be honest with them. Like, I don't want to lie to them and be like, oh, I'm having a great day when I'm really not. So, you know, and I just want to express to them like, you can still be like in a generally good mood if you're not feeling well, so. Anyways, there was that, and then we just played some games this morning. It was pretty fun. We played Frogger as our activity, and it was super fun. It's just where, like, there's a detective and the kids... That was a weird sound. Um, the kids get in a circle or whatever, and then there's someone who sticks their tongue out, and then people have to sit down because the frog, like, ate them. So that was super fun. And then... We did an, a lesson on forest stewardship, which I didn't really get to the definition of stewardship, but we kind of went out on a nature hike and talked about a, this tree and kind of prepped for our final project as well. And then the kids just kind of came in and did their final project. And then we worked on our RAN chart, which I'm going to show you guys right now. It was kind of funny a little bit. Okay, so here's our RAN chart. And there's a couple of, like, a stack of post-its right here because a lot of them were repeats. And I just didn't feel like we needed to confirm, like, the same thing multiple times. So, actually, let me see if I can put myself up here so I can show you guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just trying to set this up so you guys can actually see me instead of always okay so I noticed from my last video that it was just like you guys watching a screen so I thought I could at least show you guys so here's the stack of post-its and it was just a bunch of ones that were the same so I tell you. <laughs> All right, hold on here. Okay, sometimes that's the reality of filming. Um, this is my outfit, by the way. I usually don't show my whole self, so this is kind of exciting. Um, I also have my whistle on, so that's kind of fun. But anyway, so you can see this one is pretty bare now. And what I did was basically just take these and I read them off and I asked the kids if that was true or false. Sometimes, or well, not true or false, but like if that was confirmed, like we had learned about it and talked about it and we have multiple sources that we can confirm it. And then here are the misconceptions and you can see we do have, actually we had three in here, but one of them must have fallen down. 
but anyways, and then I kind of have one in the middle that could be confirmed, but we also need to do a little bit ex of extra work. So yeah, we just went through that and it's a really great way to kind of review that knowledge and really go through it and talk about what we learned, talk about what's a misconception and can we change that into a new learning and things like that. So I really like this RAND chart. It was kind of hard to keep up with it, especially as you got different things that you kind of thought you knew, but this would be a really great, great way to see where your students are at and kind of change their thinking as you go through the different parts of your RAND chart. So it was really fun. Um, the kids kind of wrote a little bit funny. So we were kind of giggling like, in a very nice way to kind of just be like, oh, you probably should think about what you're writing next time before you just write it. <laughs> yeah, otherwise they were working on their final project. I realized that next time if I were to do this, I would definitely give them a checklist. So part of the checklist would be here are my notes, here's my outline or my web, and then here is my rough draft. And I would definitely do that for them next time because even though they're going into fifth grade, they don't really know like how to reach all those steps. So I had many that did not do this part, which was kind of frustrating, but kind of my fault as well for not being very, very clear on what they needed. And then in math, we're talking about decimals. So we really just spent most of our math time really understanding them, which I honestly think was really helpful but we didn't get to our math workplaces, which was kind of a bummer. I was explaining them and then I looked at the time and I was like, we have to go. <laughs> so we're gonna try to take less time at the beginning and hopefully they'll be able to get to two workplaces instead of just the one. Um, otherwise, I didn't really explain what was going on at the end of last week's video. So on Wednesday, uh, you kind of could see that I went to a conference and they were talking about student voice and using this app slash website called Flipgrid and it was really informational. It was really, really cool and a great way to get your students' voices out and especially like for those students who don't often talk in class or don't really get those opportunities they can have a voice in your class as well and i think it's a really great way to incorporate allowing your students to share their knowledge via their voice and you know or oral um, explanations of the knowledge that they have because some students are you know not the greatest at writing or whatever or presenting but when they're kind of by themselves with a microphone and a camera they can do a lot of great things so that was really cool and inspirational to see I'm not sure exactly how I would incorporate that especially as like I don't have my own classroom and um, you never know kind of what technology you're gonna get but if you have the opportunity to use those tools then you can have some really great content come out of your students. Um, and then the other part was on Thursday, we went on a field trip and that was super fun. I showed you guys kind of the kids working on making wildflowers and things like that. And it was just a lot of fun and I really, really love field trips. I feel like some teachers don't like them, um, but I really, really enjoy them. I think they're a great hands-on experience and an awesome use of time. And it was just really fun. And even though my students were being like a little bit disrespectful, I thought they were learning a lot and having a lot of fun at the same time. So I didn't really talk because after that I had to go straight home and pack and leave for California. So I didn't really have time to like explain those things. And then in California I was pretty busy. So I just didn't want to sit down and like film a whole thing about talking about that stuff. So I thought I'd just sit down today and kind of explain that. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that video last week. Um, it's been really fun talking about summer school. I didn't really know what to expect coming into this and I've honestly loved it all the way through so far. The small class size and working one-on-one -on -one with students and getting to know them and teaching them content that I'm really excited and passionate about is super fun. I just love it. And yeah, it's been a great experience. Um, 
the only thing like reflecting back all right hi guys it's the next day and um I didn't really get to finish up yesterday and explain like that I was done talking but because my um camera died but basically I am feeling a little bit better today and um a little bit my nose is still kind of plugged but uh yesterday I wanted to just talk about how um one of the biggest things about teaching the summer school that I noticed about myself that I wish next time I would change is just making sure to kind of follow the reader's workshop, writer's workshop, math workshop um, framework, I guess, or um, like schedule because we often did a mini lesson but sometimes I would like forget to do the mini lesson especially on work days like today I just wanted to give the kids time to work and I didn't want to take so much time on other things I guess although I wish I would have and really gone into that kind of stuff um, and then the other thing was the share time I never really got around to that I mean, granted, it was a lot of shorter days, so maybe if I would have had more days to extend things out, I definitely would have. Um, I just wanted to answer a couple of questions. Nothing really changed today. We are doing pretty much the same things that I explained yesterday. So I just wanted to answer a couple of questions. Okay, so the first question that was asked by Nicole Walker, she said, how is the jerk... <laughs> she's it's been a long day <laughs> no it hasn't but it's fine um she said how is the job search coming along um the job search is not going as planned <laughs> um and I'm starting to kind of plan for becoming a sub again so I'm looking for a an after school kind of second job to get a little bit more money so I'm actually meeting with somebody tonight to um see about a potential babysitting option or job that I could have one or two times a week. I am a little bit worried though if I do get a last minute job, um, kind of what that will mean for doing a babysitting job, but you know, it is what it is. Otherwise, honestly, I apply to probably five jobs a week. It's so loud in the gym, oh my gosh. Um, so I applied to five five-ish jobs a week and that includes filling out applications sometimes for new school districts which takes a long time because you have to fill out a lot of these essay questions I save some of my answers but each question is worded a little bit differently so you have to do a little bit of extra work to make sure it matches those requirements and then I'm also doing emails to specific principals about the jobs that they have so that means I need to go through my cover letters and make sure they're specific to that position at that school district or whatever at that school and that school district so those kinds of things take a long time um, I kind of slowed down a little bit with summer school right now but I've been trying my hardest to really stay focused and um, kind of just keep trucking on with that kind of stuff so that possibly I can get a job but you know at the end of the day it's like <laughs> I'm trying but you know we'll have to see kind of how things work out with that another question that I thought I'd answer during this short little time is from Kate Ebert and she commented on one of my recent videos and she said, have you thought about moving or applying to a Title I school or ti two Title I schools in your area? So my short answer for that is yes. Um, my long answer for that is I did a couple field experiences in some Title I schools and I also went to a Title I school and I am there are some in my area that I have already applied to I also live close to the to like Minneapolis and St. Paul which is like our major cities here and I did a field experience there and honestly it just wasn't a great fit for me um it could have just been the classes that I was in 
but I just didn't feel um, like my skills and knowledge base would be the best for those kind of schools. So I have thought about it. I haven't really applied to those at this time. Um, and I definitely, if something doesn't come up for next year, that is of course gonna be my next step. But I do, like I explained, um, I think last week, I have 26 school districts and more that are within 50 minutes of where I live. And the reason I use 50 minutes as kind of my boundary is because I, the other place I substituted in was 45 minutes away. So I figured like 50 minutes is not that much longer. So I would extend it out to that. But that also isn't including some of those, um, I guess, inner city schools that I did some field experience in. So I haven't really ventured that way yet um, because there are so many other options and I just, I don't know if in my first year, like that's exactly what I want to be doing. But obviously, you know, if I substitute again this coming school year and then don't end up getting a job throughout the summer next year, I'll definitely be looking into some of those schools. It's just I have the option right now to be a little bit more picky, um, not because of like my experience, but just because I don't, like I live at home, so I don't desperately need the money. I'm not trying to like pay any major bills. So that is a real comfort that I have that allows me to be able to be a little bit pickier right now Plus, I can get more experience. I really, really liked subbing in the form of being able to get lots of experience, see lots of amazing classrooms, visit all different grade levels and stuff like that. So I have thought about it. I just am not ready to kind of make that leap yet. Um, but definitely next summer, if nothing works out this summer, I'll be looking into that a lot more. But I know that there's some school districts that I can start subbing in this year and hopefully have better chances for the next school year because I only limited myself to two school districts last school year. So I'm gonna open myself up to going to a few different ones, get my name out there a little bit more and open up my options. Um, that's kind of my plan B right now if nothing works out. So we'll have to see. Um, and then the babysitting job will be a good option as well. So I'm gonna go for today. I will show you guys tomorrow. I'll be like cleaning up and all that stuff. So I hope you guys have been enjoying this and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Bye. I to mention really quick, I know I already said goodbye, but I'm just gonna mention this really fast. I decided to do this assignment with the students. So here's all my information, my outline. I showed you guys all this already. And now I'm putting it into the project and I was just working on this at the same time as the students and I told them, you know, you guys, I have to work on my stuff too. I'll be adding some pictures and some more sentences and stuff like that. I also changed some of the requirements just a little bit or I made them a little more clear. So I put in total, you can see, oops, over here, um, just kind of what they need and then I'm just showing them like, yep, I'm still working on mine and you guys can get yours done too. So I just wanted to show you guys that. I think it's a really great way to show the kids like, you know, I find it kind of hard too. I'm going to have to go do it at home too. And just ha letting them know like they can do it. If I can do it, you know, you can do it kind of thing. And just making a project with them I think is really fun. And this one is not too hard. So I like this one and I am excited to see their projects tomorrow. Yay! Riley! Oh, this is Riley! Oh, oh, she's not going to give me back what I want! Yeah. No, it's funny. Wait, you guys. That's your favorite. I'm going to eat. Stay in the lab. Stay in the lab. Stay in the lab. Hi, guys. It is Wednesday and it's pretty much our last day of content and stuff like that because tomorrow's the last day of summer school and I just want it to be fun and exciting for the kids and just not a ton of work and just kind of more fun than anything else. The kids did their final projects. I didn't end up filming anybody but I wanted to show you guys a couple of examples that I had. 
I was a little bit frustrated this morning. Kids are kind of being a little bit disrespectful. Probably because they're just excited that it's the second to last day of school, but it's a little frustrating. <laughs> and um, a couple kids didn't get their projects done, and I still made them present today. Not sure how I feel about that, but, you know, I was like, it's the last day. We don't have any more time to present, so... I still, I gave them the option though that they could present as a late project and redo it tomorrow. So we'll see how that goes. But I was a little bit frustrated because they had four days and like an hour and a half yesterday. I even gave them more time today and they, some still didn't get it done. So I was a little bit frustrated, but some of them were awesome and I can't wait to show you guys. By the way, my desk is kind of a mess right now and there's kind of things like all over the place. But anyways, let's get to the main point of what I'm talking about. So here was the rubric, and I kind of didn't realize that some kids might have never used a rubric before. So um, I would definitely next time go over like what a rubric is and how to use it and different things like that to really help them. I thought it would be very clear, but if you've never used it, it's kind of hard to know how to use it. So these were just the requirements. I might have shown you guys, but just in case you were wondering. So I'm gonna start out with one that didn't really finish. Um, they're supposed to have multiple pages and um, like pictures and stuff like that. You can look back at the rubric if you're interested. And the kids wrote that rubric, by the way. They told me what they thought made sense. Um, so this girl was very frustrated that she just didn't get it done and she was more frustrated with me that she didn't get it done than herself with four days being able to do it last night and more time today it just blows my mind so i definitely next time would do a checklist and just really check in with kids to see what their progress has been because some of them just didn't take very good use of that time here's another student who didn't really finish at all um, but did meet some of the requirements. He was gone for two of the research and work days, so I gave him a little bit of a break for that. Um, but he still had some really great facts, and with what he had shown previously, this actually was really awesome. So I'm really proud of him for getting this, this much done, for sure. This student has an IEP, so I actually adjusted his requirements, especially for length and sentences. So I definitely adjusted it and made it a little bit easier so he could still give ideas and present the information and get an equal grade for his ability levels. And I thought that was fair because he has a really hard time with writing sentences. He knows a lot and he can tell me it. So I wanted him to just be able to focus on that part and not so much worrying about um, all the other stuff. He was able to type as well. So that helped a lot in getting out those ideas. This next one I'm going to show you is one that totally exceeded my expectations. Well, at least met them and then also exceeded them. Um, of course, you're always going to have students in class who do that, but she definitely did an awesome job. And let me show you guys. So she did an informational page and labeled all her pictures, did her vocab words, outlined or like circled. Um, she had her different paragraphs and everything like that. And I was just really really impressed by the work that she did it was really amazing and i'm very very proud unfortunately because of the requirements it's going to take me a pretty long time to get some of this stuff done and we're also required to be doing kind of a report card type thing so i'm definitely going to be busy the next two days not only cleaning up my room and putting things away but also doing the grades for the projects and doing the report card things. So I'm trying to get stuff done, but it's really taking a long time. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that while I still have some prep time and today at the end of the day and tomorrow morning. <laughs> so I'll let you guys know, I don't know exactly what I'm planning to do tomorrow yet. I wanna do some fun stuff 
and different things like that. So I'm going to let you guys know, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. We made it to the last day of summer school, and it's so bittersweet, but I'm excited for the kids. I feel like they learned a lot, and I can't wait to see all the great things that they do in fifth grade. Obviously, I won't see all of them, but um, I'm hopeful that they'll do some awesome things. This was such a great group, blah, 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 such a great group of kids, and I'm really excited for them in the future. Um, so today is Thursday, our last day. For Readers and Writers Workshop, I did a few different games, and I just wanted it to be a lot of fun and excitement and just enjoying their last day here and then I also did a Mad Libs which I will show you guys what that looks like I basically did a group Mad Libs and showed the kids kind of what it looked like to fill one out in case they hadn't done that before we talked about what an adjective is what a noun is what a plural is and what a verb is so that they would be able to effectively fill out their own and then they got in partners and I let them choose their own to fill out and then they got to read theirs to the class no idea I would do um no I would do Bowton she was my teacher if we if I can hi Angela a mad share Staying for the appreciation. Everyone in the kingdom was so happy that they celebrated by eating delicious food. Mr. Me never returned to the kingdom again, and everyone lived, ha lived happily ever after. The and, and it was a lot of fun. I'm really glad that we did that and still brought some content and fun into our day. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And then we did another game and we went outside early to recess. The Mad Libs took a lot longer than I had anticipated, so um, it was good though. I think it was a really good use of our time. And then for Number Corner, I gave the kids a choice if they wanted to finish the Number Corner. We didn't finish it yesterday and I figured, you know, we gotta do a little bit of learning today. So we're gonna do that. It's still on the decimals and um, we're all, we also just did a game, so I'm going to have the kids probably do Number Corner. Uh, I might give them some time to play the games. We have a couple of games left, and I, I'll just give them a little bit of time. And then we'll probably clean up, go to the computer lab, and then come back, get our backpacks on, and I have a little bit of fun trivia, some last few questions for the kids to answer and then that will be the end of the day and the end of summer school so it's crazy it went by super fast and i can't believe that we're already here it's just insane it flew by so in case you're wondering this is kind of what the classroom currently looks like i took off all of the little pockets on the chairs i took home a lot of the decorations um, there was a tablecloth on this table with some other stuff, and there was stuff on the back table. Um, there's the teaching bin that I had. I erased the board. I put away a lot of the games. And then this is kind of what our screen looks like, um, or what our boards look like. So nothing super exciting. I've taken, I've taken down most of the schedule, and... Yeah, just a few things left to clean up, um, but it pretty much looks the same, just not as exciting and fun as it did before. Like I mentioned, we're going to be doing number corner, so it's just this kind of Sudoku, Sudoku type thing that I'm doing with the kids, and that will be um, probably a good chunk of our math time, and then maybe playing the math games otherwise just going to the computer lab so the kids can play and cleaning off all the desks but I get to leave the room just how it looks and I just have to take home my stuff return our teaching bin back there and fill out a closing checklist and that stuff shouldn't take too long so I can't believe it's already here all right I got my backpack on 
I'm grabbing my stuff and we're heading out of here. We're done! Ah! All right, so it is actually the next day and I'm just back home. I took all my stuff home and got all that kind of unpacked here. Um, some other things to mention would be there's no update for jobs right now. I've kind of slowed down on applying just because I've kind of been a little, um, I don't know, kind of like felt rejected lately and I haven't gotten any calls for interviews or anything like that. So um, I've just been feeling kind of like defeated a little bit. I know you guys are gonna be like, you can do this, keep applying. Um, and I will, I just think I need like a couple days to just kind of refresh, get in my mind that I want a full-time job and all of that. But honestly, like I'm still okay with subbing and all of that, so whatever happens happens and i think it will be for the best whether it's another year of learning and growing as a teacher in other people's classrooms or learning and growing in my own um, either way i'll be happy and i'll be able to teach students so those are my two main goals is being happy and teaching students and i'll be able to do it either way so i'm very happy about that otherwise i'm just going to hang out enjoy summer I'm starting a babysitting job next Wednesday for a three-year-old and a five-year-old. So I'm excited for that. It'll be a little extra cash coming in that I obviously don't have right now. So I'm really excited for that. And yeah, again, whatever happens, happens. I'm going to just keep trucking, enjoy the rest of my summer. There's about three weeks left. And yeah, that's about it. Um, if you guys have any questions for me, you can definitely put them in the comments below. I plan on making a video answering some of the questions that people have been asking. I know one person in particular was asking a lot of questions kind of just to help them out. So I'll be making a video really soon to answer any questions. So if you have any, please put them below or in any of the videos that you maybe come up with any and I'd love to answer about subbing, teaching, um, life in general. So I hope you guys enjoyed my last week in the classroom as a summer school teacher for fifth grade students, and I will catch you guys next time. So thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye!